everybody. It's Gina. Welcome back to the Library Mouse. Awesome to be here and share with you books that I plan to read in February. To be honest, I've already finished one and I'm currently reading one and I will tell you about those, but I really wanted this to be a shop for my own shelves month. So I went through my books and picked out some that I never finished or I bought and never started. And I picked out five. Yes, I picked out five. So my goal always is to read five books a month. If I go over that, great. So with these five books, um, I'm gonna pick three. I'm gonna pick out three. Uh, I love watching people do TBR games. <laughs> this is not going to be like uh, an exciting game because maybe next month, maybe next month I'll do something super exciting. I want to watch some more videos and get some more ideas. But anyway, these are the books that I picked out that might be in the running. So the book that I finished, historical fiction, it's called White and it is a fictionalized account of a real person. Her name is Mary Jemison. She was kidnapped by a Shawnee raiding party. The rest of her family was killed and eventually was adopted by two Seneca sisters. She lived in our area, which is why this book was intriguing. I taught about her when I taught fourth grade local history, but it is a book that anyone would enjoy. It's extremely well written. I didn't love it the first time I started to read it. I lost interest and it's been like probably five years. I picked it up again and I could not stop reading it. So this book I have already read. Here are the books that are in the running for TBR. This is called The Sewing Machine. It's a historical fiction. It kind of bounces between two two eras of a family. It's written by uh, Natalie Fergie. I've never read anything of hers before. So I'll just read quickly the blurb on the back. It is in 1911 and Jean is about to join the mass strike at the Singer factory. For her, nothing will be the same again. Decades later in Edinburgh, Connie sews coded moments of her life into a notebook as her mother did before her. More than a hundred years after his grandmother's sewing machine was made, Fred discovers a treasure trove of documents. His family history is laid out before him in a patchwork of unfamiliar handwriting and colorful scenes. It starts to unpick the secrets of four generations. I love books that go through generations of a family. So this might be good. Plus, I went to the singer mansion. It's in the Thousand Islands of New York. Kind of as a neat tie-in, but if you ever get a chance, it's a beautiful, beautiful house. So we have this, another historical fiction. This one I actually bought to give to somebody, and then I decided I didn't want to give it to them, and I started to read it myself, and it was a super slow read, and I stopped. So this is Changing the World One Mind at a Time. It's written by Heather McCain. And so this, it's supposed to, it, it gives you the tools to tap into the tremendous potential of the mind-body connection. The information within this book has helped countless people transform their lives by changing their minds. And she uses concepts from neuro-linguistic programming, hypnosis, EMDR, EFT, and many other useful tools. MindChain takes all of the best information and slims it down to a few fast and easy to follow steps. It's worth a shot. Um, I need a nonfiction book. I need to read a nonfiction book. I did not read one last month and I do love nonfiction. Um, I do love self-improvement, so this might be read. Has anyone finished this book? And if you finished it, did it change your mind? Like, did you actually come away feeling 
like you had good tools to improve yourself. That's what I'm wondering. So there's this one. I've had this book for a while. It is one of the uh, Oprah Winfrey's book club books. And this is about <clears throat> the author. She was born into extreme privilege. She was the daughter of the King of Morocco's closest aide. And then her father was executed for attempting to assassinate the king. And she and her family were imprisoned for two decades. And it's about her life imprisoned. Memoir. This might be good. This is totally different. I, I am not familiar, like really familiar with the place or the time. So this should be an interesting book. This is another historical fiction. I'm, I just love historical fiction. I have a lot of historical fiction. So this is about a 19 year old in the thirties who is forced to leave her life of glitter and parties uh, to go work as a parlor maid in England because it's not safe to be a Jew uh, in Vienna. So this is about her life. They say fans of Downton Abbey will adore the house at Tyneford. So it's the house of Tyneford written by Natasha Solomons. And last but not least, 1000 White Women, the Journal of May Dodd. This is a what if book. So the author has taken something that happened in history and kind of spun it to do what if that was different. So in the 1800s, I believe it was the Cheyenne, um, the, the Cheyenne Nation proposed a deal for the Indi to the American government, which they asked for a thousand white women to come and marry their warriors. And the United States government squelched that. <laughs> it did not go through. This author, Jim Fergus, decided to write a book that focused on what if it had gone through? What if they did actually take volunteers to marry Cheyenne warriors? What would their lives would have been like? And so this is the Journal of May Dodd, the fictionalized woman who married one of the Cheyenne as if this deal had gone through. Interesting concept. I like those kind of what if books. So I can't really say it's, his I mean, it is historical fiction to a point, um, but it should be, it should be an interesting read. It was a regional book award winner for Mountains and Plains Booksellers Association. So what I am going to do to pick out the three books that I'm going to focus on out of this pile is uh, I'm just going to draw their names out of a cup. I know radical game right there. Uh, and I'm going to see which three I'm going to read. So hang on while I write the list. Okay, let's see what it's going to be. Let's shake it up and see what books I'm going to be reading this month. The first on the list is Mind Change. I'm glad that there is a nonfiction, and I really do want to check this book out a little closer. So there's one. The next one is Stolen Lives, 20 Years in a Desert Jail. Those are two heavy books. I mean, not heavy, but like heavy. Uh, no light reading. And the third book is 1,000 White Women. So those were the books that I'm reading this month. And on my Kindle, I'm actually reading a fictionalized account of Deborah Sampson, who joined the Revolutionary War, Revolutionary War as a man. I've always been fascinated with her. So that is what is on my to-be-read list for February. Check back in. Um, some upcoming videos that I thought that I would do. I want to visit some little free libraries that are close by. And I have a nonprofit that I want to do a quick share of. 
that they sell books, but they help um, impoverished youth programs in the Boston area. And um, yeah, so those will probably be my next, and maybe I'll try a vlog. Never did a vlog before, so I don't know how exciting it will be, but stay tuned and find out. Uh, thanks for uh, stopping in and checking out my February to be read list. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe, the like button, all those things that YouTubers tell you to do. And I will see you soon. Happy reading.